So if you know me, you know I don't like starting any programming project without having an idea of where I'm going. Uh, I like to sketch things out on like pen and paper. And the reason for this is I've started so many like side projects or business ideas and I just started coding and just went for it and didn't really know exactly where I was going. And I get lost in the middle at some part and it's just like, what, what am I even building? Or, oh, I wish I would have thought of this earlier. Now this is going to take all this time to fix it. Go back and do this. So I find if you draw out what you're trying to create, it will save you tons and tons of time. So for this to-do list app, I got out some pen and paper, drew a sketch of what I thought it should look like. Uh, I just took a picture of it and had it here on the screen. So this is it. Our to-do list app is going to be this little Mac window. Isn't it cool that we're making Mac apps? This is fun to be doing something different than iOS. Uh, so on there, we're gonna have a table full of the different to-do items. And you can see that there's two kind of categories here. There's the name of what the to-do item is, like buy groceries, walk the dog, wash car, make app. And then there's this exclamation point to say that this is a really important thing, or this is like a high priority thing. So I included this so we, that we can kind of give more precedence to some things uh, rather than others. So it'll be a table that has two different columns, and that's a cool feature on table tables in the Mac world is you can have columns. You can't exactly do that uh, in iOS. Then to the right of there, uh, we're going to have everything that you need to in order to add um, a new to-do item into this list. So it's just going to be labeled here that says add to-do item. So we're going to have a text box here, maybe with some predefined text to tell them this is the title or name of whatever it is. And then we're going to have that important checkbox, right? So they can say whether it's important or not. And then this add button to say, okay, go ahead add this onto the list. So fairly straightforward, like I said, but the big thing here is you want to learn about the Mac world as we build this app. So let's go ahead and fire up Xcode. Okay. So here comes Xcode and we want to create a new Xcode project just like you do with an iOS app, not too dis, um, similar to that. But when we're here, make sure you select Mac OS and there's all these different option, options of different things that you can do for us. We're just going to be doing a Cocoa application. So go ahead and select this. And back, back, background on Cocoa, if you've ever heard of like the Cocoa Heads programming group or anything like that, the framework that Apple has created in order to make these Mac apps, they call the Cocoa framework. And so um, a lot of that has the Cocoa's involved with uh, iOS as well, but Anyways, that's where that Coco name comes from. It's just the name of this framework uh, that Apple uses. So I was always confused by that and I found the answer, so I thought I'd share it with you. But anyway, select Coco application. Let's hit next. Uh, we're gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call it to-do list. You can have spaces here if you want to. In fact, I might do that. Um, kind of makes things aesthetically look a little bit better. Um, for your organization name, just it can be whatever you want. I mean, you know all this stuff from doing iOS. I'm not gonna dive into it. Hey, what's up? It's Nick. So since recording this, Apple has changed Xcode to make it so that that use storyboard option is just selected by default. And more than that, it doesn't even show up on the screen. So you might be looking and say, hey, my version of Xcode, I don't see the checkbox for use storyboard. Well, Apple has decided that going forward, you have to have a storyboard anytime you make a Mac app. So don't worry about being it checked or not. Apple has already done that for you. So I'm going to kind of explain the benefits here, you know, of a storyboard, what it does, but just know that you don't have to have this selected anymore because Apple's already done it for you. All right. Back to me. Uh, we do want to make sure this is in Swift and make sure that you have use storyboard selected. Okay. We don't want to create a document based application. We are going to be using core data. So go ahead and check that box. Uh, but we don't need tests on this one. So make sure you have use storyboards and use core data selected. Then go ahead and move forward. So it's going to ask for a place to save this. Uh, I'm going to put mine on my desktop. Okay, go ahead and hit create. And just like that, uh, we have a new project. Now, I always like to, whenever I start a new project, just hit run to see if the thing's actually working. And uh, I'm not sure if this is true for you, but whenever I run a Mac app, I swear it launches like 10 times faster than when I do an iOS app and it has to open up on the simulator. Like within the time that I've talked, our little Mac app here has opened and it's just this empty little box. But I mean, uh, this is it. This is a functioning Mac app on your computer. You can see down here, it's got the name to-do list. It's just using the standard icon, but I mean, we got our blank app up and running, which is uh, which is pretty neat. So there are a couple things that I kind of want to uh, walk you through here. Um, so the first one is, let's go ahead and go to the app delegate. The app delegate and the Mac world is just like in the iOS world, right? We've got like the application did finish launching, application will terminate and stuff. But this part I think is very interesting. So 
the core data pre-filled stuff on a uh, Mac app is so much bigger and longer than it is in the iOS world. Like uh, we got the application documents directory, managed object model, persistent store coordinator. There's all these properties and stuff within there. Then we've got a coordinator. Uh, then we've got a managed object context. Then we have a save action. A uh, window will return undo manager application should terminate. Like this is so much more code than what comes uh, in the iOS world. So that's kind of a kind of weird, quirky thing. I mean, uh, I think the big difference here is there's a lot of stuff in iOS that just happens by default, um, but there's some other things we have to implement here. So in one example here is this window will return undo manager. So if someone hits like control Z, you can have the control to say, uh, you know, I want this certain thing to happen. Um, you know, and that's what this function is helping you to start do. So anyways, lots of different cool options that come as you have that check. That's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, if you're using storyboards, things are going to look fairly similar uh, to the iOS world as far as using view controllers. So there are view controllers uh, in the Mac world. They're called NS view controllers instead of UI view controllers. And that's true for a lot of things in iOS or iOS versus Mac. Like you have UI buttons in the iOS world and you have NS buttons in the Mac world. Okay. Uh, so you can see it has a view did load just like you'd see in the iOS world. Uh, it has this represented object, which is something pretty different. Uh, it's all about this binding thing that you can do uh, with Mac apps. I'm going to talk to you about that. We won't need that for uh, this app. So we're going to go ahead and delete it. Um, but then you can see we have a storyboard uh, that's similar to like what we've worked with in the iOS world. And um, there, it's a little bit complicated here with the things that show up, but you can kind of intuitively figure out uh, what things are going on here. So you can see there's this like top bar menu and they have these different menu items, right? Like this looks like just sort of the standard stuff that you could throw up there. Um, the basic flow that you have is you have these things called windows and the window is something that you can move around has like the you know the x button the extend to big button whatever and then inside of that you have a view controller so um i mean if you think about it ios to mac like there's only ever one window inside of the ios world that's just like what the screen is where with mac apps you can op open up multiple windows at a time um and you know, uh, each of those can have their own view controllers. And inside of here, this window, like you can have multiple contr uh, view controllers inside of here. If someone goes from like one, uh, wants to go from one thing to the next, you can switch view controllers inside of this window without having to have a new one. So that's kind of cool that you can have uh, multiple windows for things that you like. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, we're obviously gonna dive into some of the other differences, but I just wanted to show you at a high level uh, what to expect when you see uh, a new Mac app project. And again, it's like fairly similar, right? We've got view controllers, we got an app delegate, we've got a storyboard. Uh, the data model, this is exactly the same as what you'd see in the iOS world. So. Some things are different, some things are familiar, but uh, just pay attention as we're going through the things that are different. You definitely have to have your Mac app hat on while you're uh, building apps for the Mac world. All the time I find myself uh, trying to reference things that are valid in the iOS world that aren't in the Mac. So just pay attention to that. But uh, in this next one, let's go ahead and actually lay out stuff for the interface.